Africa, her. She is known as the motherland, our mother's land, and our fathers, all shades of the sunflower, every complexion that is on the petal. The expression of the stem is green, the color of our vitality, rooted. You see, when I root myself in the culture, I'm uplifted more. The Berlin Conference divided the continent into 54, divide and conquer, before. That there were tribes and nations littered with kingdoms. Since we'd suffered from trials and tribulations, the taking of wisdom, slavery, and colonization. Our land we must give them, and our men, women, children. We gave them our blood, our minds, our souls. Millions divided into 2,000 tongues, affected as she suffered as a whole, her. Still yet to make a full recovery, battered, bruised, raped, abused, confused, left vulnerable. Resources taken without replenishment, abandoned by her offspring, trying to find greener pastures. But the grass is only greener because her soil is taken and watered elsewhere, nurtured, cared for. She has been told that she is mentally and physically unstable for sustainability. Her history before slavery has been lost. Hidden truths no longer searched as she pays the cost for us accepting our oppressors conditions, ridiculed for having worn out clothing and holes in her shoes, but her body is full of health, so much so everyone comes to fill their wealth, leaving wounds open, goons looting. Disguised as companies coming with aid, but how come she is more crippled than she was yesterday? Her children fled to the diaspora desperate due to material circumstances. Understandable. Her children are none the wiser until they have seen her beauty with their own eyes, felt her touch and it makes them smile, smelt the aroma, put her in a deep, relaxing state, halfway to a coma. You see, I was one of those grandchildren. Mind infiltrated by the perception of Africa we are given by the Western cameras flies around the mouth, swollen berries, barren land, guerrilla soldiers, a distinctive lack of material, direction, functionality. But she is full of love, care, community, well-being, and more. So I'm restless and I won't rest until everyone knows the truth about our culture. And you see, the truth about our culture is you can see it everywhere in the world. Mama Africa's influence has touched every corner of the globe. We all use it. The languages, the food, the people, the music. It's all infused into this world so vitally, no surprise if Kemet was the cradle of society. In her womb was civilization. Maths and science birthed intertwined with spirituality. And that's what we have to get back to. There have been many great dynasties before we had our freedom taken. And it's time to build a new one. Africa needs her children, her children's children, her great grandchildren to remember themselves by remembering her. And her call is working and we may be over the worst. Africa is on the rise, her story is being heard. It's time to go back, close her wounds, they must be nursed. Then we as a people will be able to close ours too because we are still hurt. Ting. after the pain and the suffering but we need to help ourselves because the world is truly listening the crown is glistening kings and queens our title we must take it back 
But we must remember that we are different, yet the same. United we stand. United we stand. Divided we fall. Well, let me just start by saying I am guilty. You're probably wondering guilty about what well, I'm guilty because for a long time I've never really stood up for who I am or accepted who I truly am or stood up for what I believe in. Yes, I'm British, but green, white, green run through my veins. For a long time I wanted nothing to do with Nigeria, yet alone Africa. Why? Because of the things I had heard the stories I had been told, and I just never really felt connected to the continent. I think it's fair to say that for a long time, the African heritage has been ridiculed. Let's take Nigeria, for example. The media shows the poverty that's in Nigeria, the fact that there's no stable electricity supply. I've been in a room where there's a female that is not even African, and she's dating a Nigerian brother. She tells her friends, and they're like, wait, what? You're dating a Nigerian brother? Are you sure you really want to do that? Because I heard they're scammers. Don't leave your bank card hanging around, because before you know it, your, car, your, your account's going to be empty. You hear things like that. But they don't know that Africa has a lot of soul. It has a lot of culture and a lot more to offer probably one of the main reasons why I'm doing this TED Talk, because for a long time I was ignorant until I finally saw the light. I'm going to tell you a story. In May 2017, the family and I went to Nigeria for my mom's birthday. But before that time, I hadn't been to Nigeria for about, let's say, 15, 16 years. But obviously, it's mom's 50th birthday. And you know, when your ticket's being bought, and your accommodation is being paid for, you dare not tell your mom you're not coming to the gathering. So we went. We were meant to be there for a couple of weeks. But I told my parents, I said, you know what? I want to extend my ticket just a little bit longer. So I ended up being in Nigeria till the end of June. Let's just say that Nigeria was so much fun that I went back in October of 2017, and I was in Nigeria for 10 months. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. It was there that I, you know, got to educate myself. I got to understand what the Afrobeats culture was about and what it entailed. But let me just put a pause there and let you know how I got into Afrobeats. I mentioned before that I am British, born and raised in the UK, but around, let's say, the age of 11, I moved to Saudi Arabia for about seven, eight years. And in Saudi Arabia, you're exposed to certain sounds and certain images, and Afrobeats wasn't one of them. I grew up in a Christian home, so I listened to a lot of gospel and other things, but never Afrobeats. So in 2013, when I came back into the UK, I did my foundation course at Sheffield International College, and you know, you meet a lot of people, people from all over the world. So there was a time that we were all, you know, just chilling, hanging out, and they started playing some music, and I liked the beat, and I just saw that my body was kind of doing a little one, two, one, two. <laughs> but I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, oh, Michelle, what do you think about this song? I'm like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so they're like, OK, cool, Michelle. Let's, let's play a video for you. And the video they played for me was Eminado by Tua Savage. I immediately loved the beat. I loved the culture that was in it. I just loved the way that your body was doing a little one, two without you wanting it to. And that's probably the reason why Tua Savage is my favorite female Afrobeat artist. So as soon as I left them, I went to my room, I started searching on my computer. I was like, OK, I know this artist, this artist. But at that time, you know, you go, you go while you have fun. So I was like, OK, you know what? I'm into Afrobeats. I don't want to be the one left out. So I started looking around. Then I got to know that there were two dance moves at that time that was waiting. And the first one was the, the Al-Qaeda. So you, got, you, know, you move your body like this. I was like, OK, I got it, OK. And then apart from that, we had the Shocky. The shocking, and everyone's got to do their, little, their own little twist to it. And I was like, yes. 
So let's just say when we did go out, no one could beat me on the dance floor, by the way. So yeah, I had, I had that unlock. So that was great. But the thing is, if you ask me at that time, Michelle, where are you from? I would tell you I am British and just leave it at that. Even though I felt connected with the sound and the music, everything else wasn't in form. So when I get back to my, my story that I just um, was explaining to you guys in 2017, I was in Nigeria for 10 months, was in the Ondo State for a little bit, and then I went to Lagos, and Lagos is known as the pinnacle of Africa's entertainment. So you can just imagine all the events that are happening, the shows, the concerts, it was just, it's just busy. So I'm now, I've now been invited to go to the East, and I'm like, okay, cool. I kid you not, I was very scared. Like, anytime someone was shifting on the plane, I'm like, why is he moving, though? Like, what's going on? I was really scared, but going there, it really proved me wrong because I realized I was very judgmental to the place that I was from. I'm not from the East, but Nigeria as a whole. And there in Nigeria, I got to experience 50,000 people coming together for one thing, their love for Afrobeats. One thing, just their love for Afrobeats. So I know I've mentioned Afrobeats a little bit, so you're probably thinking to yourself, what is Afrobeats? Well, first of all, I need to make it clear that there's a difference between Afrobeats with an S and Afrobeat. Afrobeat was birthed by the man himself, Fela Anikilapo Kuti, in 1960. In the late 1960s, Fela went to America where he fell in love with the black power movement. And he decided that when he was going to go back to Africa, he was going to make a change, which he did through his music. He spoke the truth hoping that one day Africa will change and come into its place of purpose. So if I can put a definition to it, I would say Afrobeat is the fusion of traditional African rhythm that's coated with a little bit of jazz, a little pop, and soul. But now we have Afrobeats, which is what everybody knows, which is great. It's more westernized, and it can be defined as popular African music. And the thing is, we have some heavyweights in Africa. If you go to Nigeria, you hear about people like Davido, Wizkid, Tiwa Savage, Burner Boy, Mr. Easy. You go down to South Africa, you've got Casper Njoves, you've got Nasty C. You go to Kenya, you've got Sati Sol. You go to the East, Tanzania, you've got Diamond Platinum. A lot of heavyweights. And I believe that the perception of Africa, it has to change. The thing is, yeah, Afrobeats is spreading. People are starting to understand it. People are starting to get into it. And they're starting to love our culture. Like, how many of us watched Black Panther? There was a lot of African culture in, in that movie. I can't lie, I was, I was very proud of that. I was like, yeah. A lot of African culture in that movie. And the thing is, you can see that. People like Major Lazer are going back to Africa and teaming up with different African artists. Davido's jumping on songs with Meek Mill. You have Wizkid doing tracks with Drake and Skepta, Tiwa Savage with Omarion, and the list goes on and on. So if people are coming to the continent and they're tapping into it, I'm just wondering to myself, why am I still hiding away from who I truly am? If they're proud, why can't I be proud of where I'm from? The thing about us as Africans is we need to know who we are. Despite what the media has portrayed us to be, despite what people have said, growing up, yeah, you hear things like, oh, all Africans live in huts. Their skin is dark because they're dirty and they're all poor, but no, it's not that. Thing is, as Africans, we are kings and queens. As Africans, we are trendsetters. As Africans, we are world changers. Africans, we, we know we have it going on. And the thing is, Africa's probably the richest continent in the world. There's a lot that happens. And me being a, in Africa, not just Nigeria, I got to go to Mali and a few other places. And you get to understand and see that those that have very little are still pushing and pushing for what they believe in and who they want to become. So it's not really about, OK, I have this, I have that. They're still willing to stand up for who they are, despite what life throws at them. And for me, that was just, that was great. To just know that I have so much, and yet I'm still very ungrateful.
The fact that I am a black queen, but for some reason I hide away from it. The fact that I am a world changer, but I think otherwise. The fact that I am a trendsetter, but I want to follow. Those are the things that started to pop up in my mind. The thing is, before I leave the stage, I just have to take this time out to thank those that have been pushing the Africa to the world movement way before I finally accepted who I truly was. It's a big thank you to people like Debanj, Two-Face, man like Fuse ODG. Fuse just did a Tina festival in Ghana earlier this month with the idea that he wants people to come to the motherland and know that they can experience events like Wireless and Glastonbury in the motherland. I remember it was his song, Antenna, that I heard for the first time being played in either a JD Sports or a Nando's. So sometimes, yeah, when I'm meant to be buying my trainers, I'm like, yeah, I need this size, but then I'm still doing this. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I need this size, but, because it just felt so great. I want to thank people like Trevor Noah, Davido Wizkid, Tiwa Savage, French Montana, Naomi Campbell, Ed Sheeran, Jada P, Grace Ladoja, and I have to say thank you to Eddie Caddy. In 2010, Eddie Caddy was the first black British comedian to sell out the O2. He's from Congo, but in everything that he does, he always makes sure to push Africa to the world. So the thing is now, if you ask Michelle, where are you from? I will tell you I'm British, but I am a young, black, beautiful, because I know I'm fine, <laughs> African woman. I'm proud. And on that note, all I can say is, united we stand, divided we fall. God bless. Woo!